You are an incredible player. No, no, we'll get to that later. Now, I talk a lot about mental training and mental health in general. Uh, I think that it's undervalued and that we as coaches or anyone else working in sport um, don't focus on it nearly enough. Um, and that players are paying the price for that. We could be helping them a lot more in sport and in life. When I get asked why I focus on the mental side of the game so much, this is the story I tell. So it was a cup final game, we went to extra time and then penalties. I wanted to take a penalty. I was confident, uh, I was even excited um, until I put the ball down on the spot. All of a sudden, my mind was screaming at me. Don't miss, don't miss, don't miss. My hands and my legs were shaking and not because I had just played a full game. My vision got all distorted like I was looking at the goal and the goalkeeper down the end of a long tunnel like it was miles away. It was a miracle that I was able to walk up and even kick the ball, but of course I missed. Now, I've been nervous before in games uh, and I've been nervous since, um, but never like this. All of a sudden, it didn't matter that I was a great player. It didn't matter that I had spent years playing this sport. All of a sudden, it didn't matter that all I had to do was kick a ball 12 yards. I wasn't able to, because it does not matter what you can do with your feet if you are not in control of your mind. Basically, the idea here is that once you're good at something, you do it automatically. So kicking a ball had become automatic for me. Uh, I didn't need to focus on uh, what I was doing or think about it very much. Um, in stressful situations though, we start thinking that we need to control every single one of our actions perfectly. Um, so we focus on what we're doing and that hurts our performance because at this point, We've learned to do it automatically. We don't need to focus. We focused when we were learning to do something. So now we're, we're reverting to that beginner state um, when what we want is just to do it automatically because we're good at it now. Um, we don't want to control our actions. Um, so a lot of things can, you know, uh, determine whether we reinvest or not. Uh, so personality, culture, how we learn certain things. It's also important to note that reinvestment is more harmful when doing complicated tasks um, and that it's not just a physical thing, it also affects decision making. Now, I would say most of the things we do out on the field are actually pretty complicated skills and though there's a lot going on all the time in soccer and we have to make a lot of decisions. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how we can cope with this. So uh, one easy way is to focus on the external rather than the internal and the distal rather than the proximal. So I know this sounds a little bit complicated, but basically all it means is that you don't wanna focus on what your body is doing. You wanna focus on things that are removed from your body and the more removed, the better. So instead of focusing on your foot kicking the ball or even the ball, what you would focus on is where you're kicking the ball to and you let the rest of the, the motion be automatic. Um, it's also really beneficial to have someone that you can talk to and let your emotions out, um, you know, in a, in a safe, uh, in a safe space. Um, so, you know, this is something I do all the time with players is I just let them talk about whatever is, you know, going on with them, whatever, uh, you know, whatever they're feeling out on the field, any negative emotions, they can just talk to me about it. Um, now you could do this with a friend, a family member, or a coach, or you could even do something like journal. Um, one more way is, you know, you know, to encourage yourself to do things automatically. Um, and you could do this by spending a lot of time off the field doing things automatically. Um, so for me, um, obviously I've spent a lot of time juggling a soccer ball um, to the point now where I do it very automatically. Um, 
and sometimes I'll get a soccer ball and juggle for a while, not as any sort of technical training, but as mental training to get my mind into that state that I want it in in a game. Um, so, you know, it, it just helps me feel the way that I want to feel on the field. So maybe I do it uh, the day before a game or the days leading up to a game, maybe even the, the morning of the game or right before the game, uh, or whenever I'm feeling, you know, stressed uh, at all, and it really helps. Now you don't need to juggle juggle a soccer ball, you could do whatever you want. Um, you know, there's there are a lot of studies on uh, people, you know, playing instruments um, that they've learned to play very well and how that can help with stress. Um, but it can be anything that you do automatically. Just spend some time doing that to de-stress and get yourself into that uh, state of mind that you want to be in when you're playing. Now there's a huge misconception about anxiety and nervousness. So when we look at levels of anxiety in elite athletes, performance and anxiety actually go up together up to a certain point. Now that point appears to be uh, when you start experiencing physical symptoms linked to anxiety, so nausea, uh, maybe shaking, um, something like that. But up to that point, some level of anxiety is actually helpful. Nervousness, after all, is just us realizing that what we're doing matters to us. Now, just knowing this should already help you. Um, if you're not experiencing physical symptoms linked to anxiety or nervousness, um, then those thoughts and feelings are actually helping you. And seeing them as positives will help you even more. Um, this reframing of anxiety from something that's unhelpful to something that's helpful is called reappraisal. Um, now, if you are experiencing physical symptoms, um, then at this point we do have a little bit too much anxiety um, or you know too many nerves. Um, the best ways to cope with this are mindfulness and meditation. Um, so my favorite way to you know do some sort of med meditation um, is to just find a quiet place um, outside if I can, and just relax and accept my thoughts uh, and feelings as they come to me. Um, you know, you can, you can do something different if you want. You could do uh, guided meditation, um, but I think it can be really, really helpful to just have, you know, even just a couple minutes every day where no one is expecting anything of you, even yourself. Um, now, as I said, you can use guided meditation as well. I prefer to do it on my own, uh, but honestly, it's whatever works best for you. Um, just make sure that the focus um, of what you're doing is on the present moment uh, and acceptance of your feelings and your thoughts. Now, self-talk is also something that I'm, you know, uh, very much a fan of. Um, and, you know, it's an extremely helpful strategy that I've used with a lot of players that I work with. Um, I write self-talk scripts uh, specifically for individual athletes. Um, you know, focus, focusing on uh, the player that they are and the player that they have been and the player that they will be. Um, I also, you know, include some acceptance of the negatives that, you know, happen in sport to every single athlete who has ever played uh, any sport. Um, you know, these scripts are a little bit more generic than the scripts I'll talk about a little bit later on in this video. Um, and, you know, they can really be used at any point uh, an athlete wants. So, you know, whenever they're feeling stressed in the build-up to a game, uh, right before a game, whenever they want. Uh, I'll include a clip of a self-talk script here. You are an incredible player. You determine how successful you will be with your dedication and hard work. You make great plays and are an incredible teammate. You have dedicated yourself. You have worked hard and you will continue to do so, so that you can be successful. You will overcome any adversity because you will not be discouraged by it and you will continue to put in the effort needed. You want to succeed at this level and progress, to perform well, to score, to assist, to win games and championships. These are your goals and you can accomplish them all by becoming the best player that you can be.
You have been successful in the past. This gives you the confidence that you can succeed again. You accept the past, the mistakes, the losses. You are the one responsible for your future. You know what you must do. You will work hard each and every day. You will train harder than anyone else. Learn as much as you can. You have already done this. It has led to success and it will again. Now, instructional sets um, can also be very helpful. Now, these are kind of similar to self-talk, but they're a little bit more specific. So I've made instructional set uh, scripts for players going to trials, uh, players you know, having a practice that they're stressed about, um, or for games. Uh, and basically, uh, what the script is, is it's telling the player what they need to do to succeed, uh, to be successful in that situation. Um, and kind of just giving them the confidence to do that uh, because they know that they can do it. Um, so yeah, that's what, a, that's what an instructional set is, and I'll include one here. You are an excellent goalkeeper. You have proven that by getting to this level. On every team you've played on, you made the starting spot your own and excelled. You have already shown that you are a goalkeeper not only worthy of playing at this level, but one who will succeed at this level. You know that you are a quality keeper. You know the incredible saves that you are capable of making. This is nothing new. You have done this all before. You have done this for years. You do this every single week, in training and in games. Play with confidence. You know that you are capable of keeping a clean sheet today. Do it. If I tell you to not think about a white bear, what are you thinking about? It's almost impossible to tell yourself not to think about something because at that point, you're already thinking about it. So on the field, if I tell you to think about not missing, you're already thinking about missing. It can also be, you know, hard for someone to focus on scoring because scoring and missing are pretty closely linked. So thoughts about scoring can turn into thoughts about missing pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, I've talked about this before, but my favorite way to combat this is actually to think of something else entirely. When I'm on the field and I feel a little bit stressed, I start whistling Yellow Submarine. I know this sounds really silly, but this takes my focus off of any negative thoughts or emotions that I'm feeling. Um, and it doesn't have the risk of, you know, turning into thoughts about missing or making mistakes because I'm not thinking about scoring. These things aren't closely linked. I can just play automatically and it takes away the stress. Um, and it's something that's worked for a lot of the players that I've you know, played with or worked with as a coach. One of the biggest things that sets elite performers apart is how they respond psychologically to tough situations. So elite athletes uh, see stressful situations as challenges rather than threats. Seeing a situation as a challenge improves performance considerably. Uh, I've told this story before, but I'll always remember my teammates standing up at halftime um, and telling our team off uh, for, for being quiet in the locker room when we were losing 2-0. And he said that the only thing he was thinking about was winning the game 3-2. That is the mentality of a champion. Now, to help yourself see things as challenges rather than threats, um, I have two strategies. The first is imagery. Um, it seems that perceived control of a situation is actually as important or maybe even more important um, than actual control of that situation. So we use things like imagery to give us that perceived control. Now, imagery is probably something that you've heard of before, 
Um, and the way I like to do this is I'll make a script for a player um, and uh, then they'll listen to it in the build up to a game. So maybe a couple days before, uh, listen to it uh, a couple times and then maybe the day of the game, uh, they can listen to it again. Um, something that's really helpful, you know, in general for, uh, you know, if, if they're feeling stressed before a game to just get them into that mental state that we want uh, for their performance. And I'll include an imagery script here. You were in the locker room before the game the familiar commotion around you. You're pulling on your jersey, now walking out towards the field. The metal clink of your studs goes silent as you step onto the grass. You notice your emotions and thoughts, the nerves that tell you you are ready, the excitement that is why you play this beautiful game. You know that you are on top form, that there is nothing you cannot do today. You think of your past successes, the goals you've scored. The ball comes into you and you chest it down to your teammate. A nice turn creates space for you. Your next turn gives you a chance to shoot. You take it. The ball strikes the post. Unlucky. Next time. Across. You rise to head it goalwards. The rebound is there. You pounce onto it. It's in the back of the net. Another strategy is to focus on mastery goals rather than performance goals. So mastery goals are what you can do and performance goals are what you did in a game. Um, so the focus should always be on improving so that you can perform well rather than just performing well. The last thing that I wanna to touch on is resilience. Now, it's obviously tough to lose games, to make mistakes, to play badly, uh, but these things, they're gonna happen to you if you play sport, you know, for any period of time at all. Um, and it's really, really important that you think of these things as experiences that are going to help you because that's what they are. Um, you know, you need to accept those mistakes, those losses. They're part of the process that goes into creating the player that you are and every single athlete in the world is going to experience similar things. I just wanna close this video out uh, by saying something that I, I have said before, um, but basically it's just that mistakes do not change the player that you are. You are the same player before you make a mistake and after. Uh, unless you let that mistake change you. And the second thing that I wanna say is that nothing bad is going to happen to you if you play badly in one game, or you make one mistake, or you lose one game. Everything is going to be okay. I remember a coach telling me once that he thought I was playing as if I thought that he was gonna chop off my head if we lost a game. And that's no way to play the beautiful game. You need to be enjoying yourself and playing freely because otherwise you're never going to be the player that you could be. You are an amazing player. You are in control of your future and you will make it what you want through perseverance and effort. You have played incredible games and formed lifelong friendships with your teammates. You have sacrificed to get to the level where you are now, to be successful. You have suffered setbacks, but they are only temporary. You know you can rise to any challenge if you continue to work hard instead of allowing it to stop you. Remember your game-winning hat-trick for Larissa? That was the outcome of hard work and belief in yourself. Remember that goal at ILFC Arena? The feeling of joy? with your teammates all around you. To win games, continually improve, and play with a smile on your face, always. These are your goals, and you will achieve them all by becoming the player and person that you are and will be. You will do this by working hard in training, 
and showing your potential in matches. This will not always be easy, but you have the resources and the ability to do whatever you want. You have support from all of those that care about you. Passion, the love for the game. You will do anything required of you today to move closer to realizing your dreams. You have been successful in the past. This gives you the confidence that you can succeed again. Remember all of your goals with Seacoast, the great plays. When coaches doubted you, you proved them wrong and won their respect and the starting spot. Failures that you've experienced in the past have only made you stronger, more resilient. You are the hardest worker. You've been training for this for years. You have trained your mind and your body to be ready to succeed. You accept the past. You accept any mistakes that you have made and the games that you have lost. You cannot control the past. You cannot control what others think. You cannot control the outcome of every game. But you accept this, and you let go of the negativity. You forgive yourself for all the mistakes you've made. What you can control is the present, and you will work hard now and in the future to be successful. Remember at Eastwood, becoming one of the star players right when you joined the team, helping us to climb higher and higher in the table, assisting more than half of the goals I scored. You are responsible for your future. You know what you must do. Any obstacles are temporary. You will overcome them. Now at Ileskas, you've proven yourself to be an incredible defender and an asset going forward. You will focus upon what you can control and live your dream.